for them. It's recording in progress. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good evening. Tonight, we're going to talk about how it's time to choose. The company's management team put their heads together to decide how to reduce the high employee turnover rate. They spend their first six or eight weeks learning our system, then they join another company, complained one executive. Yes, but doesn't that speak highly of our training program, chirped another one, more optimistic. Today, there's certainly a concern about choice and loyalty. It seems that personal interest trump loyalty for the purpose of service and the common good in all kinds of relationships, in the workplace, in school, at home, at church. If choices are to be made, loyalty often is viewed more as a vice than a virtue by many people these days. Decisions, choices, life is full of them. Some say we have lots of freedom to choose and we should relish that freedom. Yet others observe that such freedom only gets us into deeper trouble since we fail to choose wisely, making all the wrong choices. Yet others would say that we don't really have any choices at all. Why? Because someone else more powerful than us is choosing for us. And still others would say that remaining indecisive and not choosing is also a choice made by some. Dangerous Minds is a movie based on a true story about a high school teacher, Luann Johnson a former Marine played by Michelle Pfeiffer, making a difference in the life of troubled but very smart inner city students. In one scene, while Luann is in front of the class teaching, the students are upset with her because they feel she ratted on three students who were fighting. Luann asks them if they want to discuss the issue with her, but there's no response. Fully calm and composed, she tells them, if they feel so strongly about it, they should leave the classroom. No one's forcing them to stay. They can stay or leave. One of the students objects and tells her they don't really have a choice. If we leave, we don't get to graduate. If we stay, we have to put up with you. Luann tells the student that's a choice. Maybe it's not one they like, but it's their choice. Another student angrily objects and says, man, you don't understand nothing. You don't come from where we live. You're not bust here. You come and live in my neighborhood for one week, and then you come and tell me if you had a choice. Luann, with a slight tinge of anger, replies, there are a lot of people who live in your neighborhood who choose not to get on that bus. What do you think they choose to do? They choose to go out and sell drugs. They choose to go out and kill people. They choose to go out and do a lot of other things, but they choose not to get on the bus. The people who choose to get on the bus, which are you, are the people who are saying, I will not carry myself down to die. When I go to my grave, my head will be high. That is your choice. Then in a slightly louder and angrier tone, she says, there are no victims in this classroom. The camera shows one serious student considering her words. Another female student asks, why do you care anyway? You're just here for the money. Luann quickly responds, I made a choice to care and honey, the money ain't that good. Luann in this movie is much like Joshua in our first lesson who says, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. You may make different choices. We will serve the Lord. As people of faith, we're called upon to be loyal to our Lord and to his will, even when the majority all around us are turning away and relying on other gods. In a conversation I had with an older woman recently, she lamented over the trend of many youngsters and their parents turning to sports as a kind of religion. They will do anything to keep themselves involved in their sports. They become so committed and loyal to, to sports that everything else takes a back seat. This elderly woman lamented, too, that her family members do not attend church as often as they used to, as she and her husband brought them up to do. 
In fact, most of their children's friends have also failed to prioritize their Christian faith. In this setting, our lesson today has much to teach us. Even though we believe, as did the Israelites, that God has taken the initiative to choose us, not the other way around, nonetheless, like Joshua of old and the Israelite tribes, we are called upon to respond to God's love by choosing to be faithful to God. Joshua had grown old, but under his faithful and wise leadership, the Israelite tribes had entered the promised land. They had been successful in their military campaigns against the Canaanites. The Israelites had occupied the promised land, and the land had been allocated to the different tribes. Life was unfolding in some semblance of no normalcy. As God's faithful servant, Joshua understood that there were dangers with this sense of normalcy. It could cause the people to become indifferent towards the Lord and their commitment to him. It could it delude them into believing that it was not God who provided for them all along, but rather they could begin to believe it was their own doing, their own good work. Unless challenged, the Israelites could decide to put their eggs in multiple baskets by worshiping various gods associated with their neighbors, as well as the one true God. Their loyalties could be divided among false gods. If this trend mushroomed among the Israelite tribes, they would soon lose their sense of identity and unity as God's chosen people. Joshua is now at the end of his life, so here is his last chance to rally the troops, so to speak. He calls them all together in one place, Shechem. His purpose is to renew the covenant between God and the Israelite tribes to reinforce that, their identity and their unity. In his solemn speech, Joshua reminds the tribes of how God had called Abraham away from the worship of many gods in the land of his birth to the worship of the one true God, and how God led him to the promised land. He promised later he would give that land to all his offspring, and he would multiply them to make many nations. Following this preamble, Joshua then confronts the tribes, exhorting them to avoid contact with all false gods from foreign lands. He called them to faithfully serve the Lord their God in reverence, sincerity, and faithfulness. In other words, Joshua exhorted them to obey the first and greatest commandment, to have no other gods besides the Lord their God. He leaves them an option. Choose this day whom you will serve, the Lord God or the false gods of their ancestors. Then he makes it clear, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. In his call to covenant renewal, Joshua takes the initiative as God's chosen leader to set the example before the people, even though many of the Israelite tribes already were serving other gods. Joshua was going to serve Lord God only, Yahweh. Joshua was a true leader who talked the talk and walked the walk. He was a role model for doing what is right rather than following the example of the majority. In this way, he was much like his faithful predecessors, including Abraham and Moses. The people, in response, do remember the Lord their God. They begin to recite their salvation history. They remember how God had delivered and protected and provided for them. In answer to Joshua's question, they promised, Therefore, we will serve the Lord, for he is also our God. Joshua, to reinforce their commitment to God, reminds them of the tragic consequences of serving other gods. The Lord will surely do harm to them if they're not loyal. Again, the Israelites respond, they will indeed serve the Lord and serve him only. Now Joshua exhorts the people to be faithful, having agreed to take a solemn vow or oath. He wants them to witness one another as they agree to be obedient and commit themselves to the Lord. After taking the oath, they all say, we are witnesses. 
Finally, Joshua once again commands the Israelite tribes to put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. Notice here, Joshua fully realizes that his people still have foreign idols in their possession. Hence, the need to abandon them completely if they want to be truly loyal to the Lord. If they keep them around, they'll be tempted to pull them out and worship them again. Again, the people answer in the affirmative. The Lord our God we will serve, and him we will obey. Following this, Joshua completes the covenant renewal ceremony by drawing up a statute and ordinance for his people. In our life and faith journey, we too can run into dangers and temptations. There are false gods beckoning to us every day. We, like Joshua and the Israelites, need to remember whose we are, where we've been, where we are now, and where we're going. Jesus tells us in the Gospels that we, like the Israelites, have been delivered, protected, and provided for by God. We, like the Israelites, have been and still are chosen by God to be his children. We have been called, loved, and forgiven. We've been assured that Jesus is still with us always. We also have a promised land to aspire to, the kingdom of God, heaven, if you will. Do we take God's love and promises for granted? Do we try to divide our commitments and our loyalties? Or do we, like Joshua and his family, say, we will serve the Lord? Each Sunday is for us like a covenant renewal ceremony. We're given the opportunity to remember whose we are, who we are, where we are, where we're going, and who will guide us there. It's God, the same God of the Israelites. Therefore, Joshua's choice to choose God is one we can ratify. Joshua's confession of faith is one we can say wholeheartedly. As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Julian of Norwich was a Christian mystic of the 14th century. She spoke of life's hard times when she said, God did not say, thou shalt not be tempested, thou shalt not be travailed, thou shalt not be afflicted. He did say, thou shalt not be overcome. Choose this day whom you will serve. Choose to serve the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. You let us choose, O God, between you and the false gods of this world. Amid the night of sin and death, wake us from our slumber and call us forth to greet Christ, so that with eyes and hearts fixed on him, we may follow to your eternal kingdom. Amen. Go now in the sure knowledge that you were created by God the Father, redeemed by Jesus Christ, his son, and empowered by the Holy Spirit to follow faithfully until you reach the promised land. Amen. Amen.